today we're going to talk a little bit about search advertising. So you can really think of search engine marketing as being composed of two components. A search engine optimization, which is working to get your website featured as high as possible in search engine results pages, and we talked about that in another lecture. Um, or search advertising, which is trying to uh, bid so that the ads that get displayed by search engines include your website towards the top of the uh, of those ads that possibly could happen, right? So um, these are the two components of search engine marketing. Um, and today we're gonna to talk about the paid version, right? Search advertising. So search advertising is a way to pay a search engine to promote links to your website. Um, this could be anything from a little text advert, which is mainly what we're gonna talk about, to rich media banners, for instance, that uh, display advertising that might be around it. Um, that's especially on search engines with, like YouTube, which you might not think of as a search engine, but people search a lot on there, right? Those are the kinds of things we're often talking about. Um, now, all of search advertising is often funded through what's called a pay-per-click business model, right? Which means that advertisers don't pay anything unless the user actually clicks on the link, right? Um, and so that's kind of intriguing to me, right? Because you have all these um, ads that are out there, but really no one's spending any money on them unless somebody clicks on the link, right? Uh, but it's obviously a rich business because Google derives 90% of its income from advertising, right? Of which about 80% is search advertising. That chunk was about $58 billion within the last couple of years, right? So that's a big amount of money that's being spent that essentially comes from people clicking on links, right? Uh, quite a considerable amount of money. And just, you know, clarify in case you never seen these before, which is probably none of you, uh, you know, the search engine ads are these ones at the very top of the page, right? They're the ones right here. So I typed in digital marketing into Google, I get digital marketing by Adobe, delivered the ideal experience, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and, you know, another one, Taptica, right, in these ads. And, you know, some different, different search engines promote them in different ways. Sometimes they'll be down the right, sometimes they'll be in other places, but that's the basic idea, right? Now, how should you think about putting together, what do you think about if you want to put together a search advertising campaign? Well, the first thing to do about, think about, is think about keywords. Because really what search engine advertising about is about identifying keywords that you want your website to be associated with and then asking Google or Bing or whoever to basically show your ad with those keywords and then offering them some money. Right? So one way to think about it is that you have an account that's at the highest level and that those accounts are then associated with different campaigns. So you might have one campaign associated with one particular promotion you're doing or one particular idea. And then you can have different groups of ads within those campaigns, right? So you may have slightly different variations on the text, all emphasizing one particular aspect. And then within each of those groups, you might have different keyword phrases that you're trying to pair in. And we're really gonna talk at this level, the list of what those keyword phrase lists might look like and how they will motivate particular ads from showing up, right? Um, so this is the basic idea behind what a, a search advertising uh, campaign kind of looks like, right? Uh, but what does what do they actually want? What do they actually want from you in terms of the ad that gets associated with these keyword lists? So now that you have that, that kind of structure of the campaign down, let's talk about what an actual ad looks like. And actually this changed in uh, 2016. Uh, it used to be that the structure looked a little different, um, and I'm primarily going to talk about Google because they're the dominant player in this market. Uh, but essentially, the new structure uh, is set up uh, when they eliminated the right-hand ads. So you used to have those right-hand ads in Google, and when they eliminated those, uh, it moved towards mo more of a central kind of above-the-text ads, um, partially because of the mobile market. Right. They also changed the way that the ads uh, would look like and they um, are bigger than they used to be, actually, because now they don't have to worry about having those small right hand ads as well. Right. And so what they allow you to do now is you can have two headlines, which um, can will sometimes be displayed one after each other, sometimes on top of each other, um, each of which can be 30 characters. You can have a description, which is one long line of text that can be 80 characters. You have a display URL, which in um, nowadays is now actually automatically extracted by Google uh, from the final destination URL, um, now called the final URL. 
and up to two paths, which are 15 characters. Um, and, and so what does all this mean? Well, all this means is that you're going to look at something like this ad, right? Where you see the first headline, digital marketing by Adobe. The second headline, deliver the ideal experience, Adobe. Um, and then you'll see the two paths right there and right there, right? Um, and in this case, the description is located right here underneath it, right? Um, and so that's exactly what we mean when we talk about these different components. Now, um, there are guidelines for these, right? So there are editorial rules for what the ad should look like, right? So for instance, the ads must be comprehensible. You can't just have gibberish in there. Uh, they must be clear about what they are selling. They must use a, the appropriate structure. You can't put things in. Uh, for instance, one of the extensions to the ads is they had a phone number, so you're not allowed to put the phone number into the description, right? The ads must be informational, right? They must not contain something that just see, and that's kind of a loose guideline. They must not contain something that seems flowerly or poetic rather than they must provide information about the actual content of what they're trying to sell. They have to use traditional grammar, capitalization, and spelling, uh, and they cannot repeat words unnecessarily, right? Um, so those are some basic rules about how to write these ads. Once you have those rules down, you can now write a bunch of ads uh, and then create those ads for your firm. And then the problem is now thinking about what keywords to associate. So when you're writing your ad copy, you have to realize this is your one chance to convince that customer to click. You really don't have another chance right at this point. So in order to do that, you should really try and understand what the searcher's intent is and speak to that as directly as possible. And you have some idea because you have the words that they're using to search or you have some proxy thereof, right? Um, as a result, if you can make sure that the call to action is clear, right? Like we're gonna give you 20% off a of sign up, we're gonna give you free shipping, right? Whatever, right? Make sure that that's very obvious. And you should provide offers and benefits right there in the ad, right? So uh, the display URL that Google will create, or you know, I assume that many of the other search engines will adopt similar platforms, uh, will be based upon the domain of your final URL, which is the, the, the landing page that you're sending people who click on the link to. You should aim to make that final URL domain therefore be relevant to the ad because it's going to show up in uh, the in the in the ad that you see, right? Um, so don't be a random set of letters and numbers. It should be something that's actually relevant. So in the digital marketing case, for instance, Adobe used Adobe.com, right? Um, now you can specify these paths afterwards, right? Like marketing cloud and digital marketing, but they don't have to correspond to anything that you can actually see on the website, right? You can almost think of those as additional words, keywords that you might be using to influence people's ideas about what they might find when they click through. And in fact, in Adobe's case, if you actually cut and paste the text of what's on the display URL, it doesn't show you a valid page. What This is actually the URL of the page when you click through, right? Don't worry about that. Really, that display URL is just there as another line of advertising to some extent, right? You should also make sure that the landing page is, is ready to convert a user who shows up to it. As much as possible, it should be personalized to someone who typed in whatever those key search words were when they came in. Uh, and you can do this by making sure that that page is relevant to the searcher and has a clear call to action. Um, in addition to all this other content that you can enter, you can also enter get ad extensions. And these are additional things that you can put in your ad that get displayed in certain contexts, right? Um, so for instance, they have uh, Google added what was called structured snippets. These are little kinds of sets of words uh, that can be added automatically to an ad to tell people about what happened. So one of them is amenities. So I was looking at dentist, right, um, in the area, and it says free Wi-Fi, relaxation, headphones, television, complimentary beverages, services, right, and this dentist used the services, structured snippet, gentle dentistry, custom dentures, etc., and location, right, so in this case it actually gives the exact location, right. Um, you can also have an extension for phone, so this one has the phone numbers displayed, this is a search for cord blood. Uh, by the way, I use dentist and cord blood because they are two of the more highly uh, competed for AdWords. They, they, they charge a lot of money. Cord blood, if you don't know what it is, it's a service where it actually preserves the umbilical cord blood uh, to help with uh, uh, stem cells and future disease prevention for newborns, right? Um, and so these, the, 
these ads tend to cost a lot because they're highly competitive, partially because they're high markup industries, right? Um, so here you can see the phone extension for the AdWords ad, and here you can also see site links. Site links are links to pages deeper in your website than just the landing page would take you to. Um, so that's it for the design of ads. In the next part, we'll talk about how to target those ads.